Hi there, everyone. My name is Christian Eschbach, and welcome to one of my album reviews. If you're one of my regular viewers, you know this is the third part of a Megadeth triple shot. If you read the title of this one, you already know what it is. If you haven't read the title yet, let's build up the suspense a little bit, and we will discuss which album this is. This is actually the last Megadeth album I ever bought myself. Megadeth, Cryptic Writings. Yes, that's right, folks. This is, in fact, the last Megadeth album that I bought myself. Uh, as I mentioned in the review for So Far So Good, So What? There is actually a copy of Risk in my CD collection. Tracy added it in. I honestly have not listened to it since it was added in. Um... This is where Megadeth ended for me. I know they've released stuff since then. I just... Uh, I got out. I got out. Um, and my getting out of Megadeth had nothing to do with this album. Uh, it was... Um, what they started doing after this album. Yeah. Sorry, guys. All right. So, in my previous review, I um, I covered Rust in Peace. Rust in Peace was the first album to feature the classic Megadeth lineup. This was the last album to feature the classic Megadeth lineup of Dave Mustaine, uh, Dave Elfson, Nick Menza, and Marty Freeman. Just totally blind for a second there. Uh, Marty, I believe, left after this album. I think Nick left after the next album. I don't remember 100% how that went. This is uh, by far the most different of all the Megadeth albums. And the reason why I say it is the most different of all the Megadeth albums is this is the album that breathes the most. This is the album that seems the least like just a bunch of riffs jammed together and played as fast and as furious as possible. This one actually feels like they wanted to make a really solid, good album. And not a commercial album. Just a really solid, good album for more people to enjoy. Um, this is not them going grunge... Or using that argument like what happened with Metallica with Load and Reload. Uh, to be fair, uh, I, I probably like this album better than Load, but not as good as Reload. Figure that. Alright. So, uh, let's get into the album. First off, if you're one of my regular viewers, you know I'm a drummer. If you're not one of my regular viewers, you know that now. Trust. That. <laughs> Oh my god, that intro on Trust is just killer. And that slow come in with the guitars and the slow build up. And I was like, Oh yeah, man. Oh yeah. That is how you start an album. That is how you release a first song on an album, man. And when this song hit the radio, you knew it. Oh yeah. I'm actually pissed this song did not get more radio play than it got because it really deserves a great tune. Um, and to this day, it is still one of my all-time favorite Megadeth songs. Definitely. Like, always. If I have Megadeth... If I put Megadeth into my playlist, Trust, Peace Cells, you can guarantee those two. Anything outside of those two, it, it, it's up in the air. But you can always guarantee Trust and Peace Cells will be on there because they're both great for exercising to, just listening to while you're going. Fantastic tune. I just love Trust. Um, and then that goes into Almost Honest. And I like Almost Honest. It's a little bit different for them. Now, um, I will mention that this album was produced by a Dan Huff. Dan Huff was known as a country producer at that time, or a Nashville producer, if you like, at that time. 
someone really kind of different. And there was going to be, there was a lot of issues everybody had. They're like, oh, I'm going to totally change the feel of the album, totally change the vibe. Gonna... Compared to previous Megadeth albums, yeah, it definitely changes it. But, if anything, you know, maybe he put a little weight on Dave's hand, so instead of playing at 180 beats per minute, he was playing at 120 regularly. And 120 to 140, really, that's that's primo beat for, you know, songs. Maybe instead of playing, you know, also 16th or 32nd notes at that tempo, you know, he's just playing quarter notes, maybe eighth notes, you know. <laughs> Give it a little more breath, a little more little more room to let the notes actually sing, you know. Uh, and almost honest, I, I, I really just kind of really get into Dave when he's singing this one, you know. Um, you know, I'm not huge on the lyrics. It's just Dave singing in general on this one. It was really kind of cool, you know. I, I like the tone in his... He always has that weird little nasally kind of... Almost down is... You know, I, I'm doing it wrong, but... You can kind of hear where I'm going with it. You, I've kind of got a bit of that nasal myself. So I can totally appreciate it. But it, it's really cool the way he does it. Normally I hate nasally vocals. But this one, it works. Uh, that goes into Use the Man. Another tune that I really, really get into. Um, I actually really like the fact that they use the classic old Pins and Needles tune at the very beginning. Um... And the way they go with it. And there, there's just a whole bunch of fun with this one. I wish I had more to say about it. But I really don't. Uh, then we get into Mastermind. Uh, I dig Mastermind. Once again, there's a vibe to this song. Uh, the producer really created vibes on each so song. Each song has its own kind of vibe from the other song, you know? A little essence, a little different breath in them, you know? Like, it all sounds like it's on the same album. It's not like he produced one song to sound like it was done in, a, you know, uh, an echo chamber and another song to sound like it was recorded on the street using, you know, just a video camera mic or anything like that. But the vibes themselves, like, when you get to Mastermind... Dan Hoff made sure that there was that kind of almost computerized techno mastermind kind of vibe. Um, you know, like, it just totally has a vibe to it that makes you think, hey, that works. That makes sense for a song called Mastermind. Uh, then you get into the Disintegrators. The Disintegrators, I believe, is the shortest, second shortest song on the album, Okay. And this is what I really, one other thing I really like about what Dan Hoff did. Now, Megadeth has a tendency to, well, especially on their fast million riff jam together songs, go too long with the songs, you know? If you look at a lot of songs on Rust in Peace, a lot of them clock in at, I think it's like at least four minutes, up to five minutes in some cases. I know a few are definitely shorter. Uh, but... On this one, when you get to the Disintegrators, and there's another one a little bit later down, uh, the Disintegrators is one of those major rapid-fire kind of songs, but because of how short it is on this album, I don't mind it so much. To me, it actually still feels a little long and drawn out, and I'm surprised when I see that it's 2 minutes and 50 seconds, just because the way the song plays, to me, it always feels like it's closer to the 4-minute range. But I can dig it on this album. The thing is, though, is this... The Disintegrators is interchangeable with pretty much any other Megadeth song off any other album. It's just that type of Megadeth song. But it's, it, you could, you know, it would be a good one to replace, you know, in other ones. You know, on So Far So Good, it's So What, it could only make the album better, you know, <laughs> compared to everything else that's on there already. Um, I think it would have even worked as a song on Rust in Peace, you know. It, it's one of those songs. Then you get to I'll Get Even. I had another tune I just really dig. A great chorus to sing along with, too. Uh, then you go to Sin. Sin is... It's one of those ones when the album's going, it's cool. When the album's not going, I don't think about it. Uh, a Secret Place. That one's really kind and cool and different for them. And I actually really dig A Secret Place. Um... 
I really like the vibe behind it. There, just everything with the song really has a great vibe. And you know what? I gotta say, when Dave lets Marty kind of do his bass thing, and he lets the bass take the front, and he just kind of plays more gently with the guitars, it really, really works. Especially with the way he sings and stuff like that. I I really wish they did more like that. I, I do. You know, I, I just, it's incredible. Although, I guess with, you know, the way things are between Dave and Alfson these days, I don't think that will ever happen. But who knows, that that relationship comes and goes. <laughs> uh, then we get to Have Cool, Will Travel. Um, you know how those things I've been saying that kind of compliment this album? You know, how I like it breathes and stuff like that. Have Cool, Will Travel just kind of feels like a really weird, rock song on this album, especially with the harmonica in it. Harmonica and a Megadeth song, just hmm, interesting. So with Have Cool Will Travel, <sighs> harmonica in a metal song. Now, I like playing harmonica. I like a song like Black Sabbath's The Wizard, which also uses it. I've heard Alice use it in darker, heavier stuff. But Have Cool Will Travel is not actually a darker, heavier stuff kind of song. It's a, this is the one song we're having a country producer. Did not work for me. <laughs> the best I can say on that one. Um, it's the only song on the album where I'm not overly fond of it. I, I don't mind it. I mean, I it sticks in my mind a lot more than Sin does, but it, it, it sticks in my mind kind of for the wrong reasons. Then we get into She-Wolf. Oh, She-Wolf is hot. I like this song, man. I uh, really, really get into this one every time it's on. I've put this one into multiple playlists over the years as well, uh, just because it's got such a cool vibe to it. It, it is a really kind of just a fast song. Um, I think this is one of those ones where I just kind of enjoy the lyrics a little bit more. Uh, yeah, that, that's honestly all it is. I just this one's more of the lyrics I enjoy, and I like enjoy singing along in the choruses, you know, stuff like that. Uh, Vortex is kind of cool in between, um, but it's not, once again, it's a song I don't think of if the album's not playing. And then the album ends with FFF, or Fight for Freedom. But um, it actually says FFF. And I really like Fight for Freedom. I think it's a really, really cool tune. I think what my definition of freedom is and what Dave Mustaine's definition of freedom is sometimes might vary and change a little bit. I don't necessarily say, share a lot of the same views as Dave Mustaine, but I still respect he's allowed to have the views he's allowed to have. Um, all right, so the big reveal. I said in the So Far So Good So What review that I would say how... I said that I was doing an album I absolutely love. An album that I'm not a fan of. And an album that most people aren't a fan of. So let's do it. An album that most people are not a fan of. So far, so good, so what? I really just don't know many people that like that album. An album that I'm not really a fan of. Rust in Peace. Just... I'm not angry enough for that album. You have to be a certain kind of special angry for that album. I'm just not that special and angry for that album. This album, I love. It is honestly my favorite Megadeth album. Uh, it is the one that also gets overlooked the most often or gets disregarded the most often because it's the least angry album. It's the least aggressive album. It's the least pissed off and violent album. And that there, folks, is the whole reason why the album is disregarded the way it is, I think. Because I've seen multitudes of people say that this is their favorite Megadeth album. And 
I kind of wish Megadeth had kept going in this way. Uh, I know that they go more pop later on. I'm definitely not looking forward to listening to that when I have to get to that point. Um, and then I know they go back to metal again. And the problem is, when they go back to metal again, a lot of the metal they go back to is the metal I don't want to listen to. I'm not a fan of how angry and pissed off and violent towards the world Dave Mustaine's music is sometimes. It just doesn't work for me. I'm just not that angry of a human being anymore. I don't think I ever was that angry of a human being. It's the same reason why I never got into Slayer, unfortunately, and why I never got that heavy into Pantera. I mean, I enjoy Pantera, but I never got heavy into them because I'm just not that angry. And wait till I do my review for Pantera. That'll be coming soon because... I got some cool talk about that one, including my experiences with Dimebag Daryl. Who's a cool dude. I, uh, I think, uh, I, I, I think that, uh, Dave might have made a mistake when he decided not to take Dimebag on as a guitarist because he didn't want to bring on, uh, his brother as the drummer, you know? It is what it is. I think that was his mistake. But, it, you know, whatever. Anyways, leave me uh, your thoughts in the comments, folks. Uh, I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, what, what is what is your favorite Megadeth album? Which Megadeth album do you like the least? By all means, you can disagree with me. Uh, you know, I, I don't expect you to agree with me. We all have to have different tastes or else the world's going to get really boring, right? Anyways, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Otherwise, peace, love, and take care.